Hello, and welcome to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. This is video three. You should check out the earlier videos, uh, probably before coming to these later videos. Uh, great, we're in the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and that's where we found the template under code there. So down below, we're following along in Zim School as well. So if I press School, we're still on the first lesson here. And we've got some work to do still. We've talked about classes, objects, parameters, variables, or constants. We haven't talked about scope yet. That actually uh, can be an issue early on, but it might be better if we leave that until we talk about functions. We've seen a statement, that's great. The dot syntax and chaining, so that's good too. Uh, what we haven't seen is these transformations. So there's a whole set of how we can adjust objects. So we want to look at those this time. Um, we've seen a few shapes on there, but you should come in here and take a look at some of the other shapes that we can make as well. We did a rectangle and a blob. Here's a circle, it's a basic one, but there's more types in there as well that you can practice with. We've only seen a button, yet there's lots of different components in here. Most of them work in the same way. So perhaps we could see a few more components in this video. Okay, great. Let's go back to our code then. Reduce this down. Here's our code. We were storing this in lesson one uh, inside of a creative coding folder. And once again, this is the template that we got from the site under code. And if you haven't seen the previous videos where we've gone through this, then you should have a look there. All right down below, we were working with uh, our buttons. We tried a different way, different ways to get that on the screen. And we had left off with a rectangle and a blob. Let's comment out the blob. All right, so we've got this rectangle, and I just want to view it in a normal browser. So we had installed that plugin as well, or yeah, that package, I should say. And I'm going to open in browser. And here that is in a normal browser, which I'll reduce a little bit. So there's that rectangle in there. We'll just leave it like that so I can come back here easily. Um, also, for the time being, we had put some borders on that. I'm just going to take those off and make it blue. I can see blue, perhaps. And we had a dot center on the stage. I was showing you that we could pass the stage in there or any other container, but by default, dot center will be fine. We're going to deal with this thing called a registration point. Centering it's no problem. It just sort of takes the whole shape of it, this rectangle, and, and figures out an equal amount on both sides and the top and the bottom, and ends up being centered. But uh, the add to, or indeed a loc, let's go to a loc, and we can play around with this a little bit. We've seen this before. Locate this at 100, 100. And we could say on the stage, but that's not necessary. It will by default go on the stage. So we refresh here. Here it is at 100, 100. But what part of the rectangle gets placed at 100, 100? Can you tell? Yeah, the top left corner of the rectangle is being placed there, not the center of it or anywhere else. This is 100 in the X, and this is 100 in the Y. So a way that we can check that out is we can chain on, note where I went there, I went before the, the end of the statement. So that when I hit enter, I can go dot outline like that, and the semicolon stays at the end of our chain. But we're going to start chaining on a whole bunch of things here and see how they affect the rectangle. It's a really neat thing about chaining. So there's kind of two approaches or two ways that we can deal with things. We can pass in parameters that gives us information about the general rectangle. But there's a whole bunch of properties that we can change afterwards if we want. And that's what we're going to go through in today's video. All right. So we've located it at 100, 100, and then we're going to dot outline it. What outline does is the following. Refresh. It puts a box, a red box, around the bounding box of the shape. So... And not only that, but it puts 
a round circle where this thing called the registration point is, and it puts a little crosshairs at where zero, zero is inside of our object. So uh, there's these things called containers, and each container has its own zero, zero spot. The stage is very much like a container. It's the first container, and it gets a zero, zero up in the top left corner. Here's a rectangle, and it gets a zero, zero at this little cross. What it means is if we put things in the rectangle uh, and put them at 100, 100, then it would be 100 over and 100 down inside the rectangle, not 100 from the outside. Anyway, we don't need to worry about that at the moment. But we do need to worry about this round circle. It is indeed that round circle is called the registration point. That's where our rectangle is placed. So when we say 100 and 100, it picks up the, the rectangle and sticks it so the registration point is at that location. All right, now why does that make a difference? Uh, a circle is a little bit different, first of all. Let's just put a circle on here, a new circle instead. We'll come back to the rectangle in just a sec. We'll give that circle a radius of 100, and we're going to locate it at 100, 100, so we refresh here. Now we get a circle. Its registration point is in the center, not the top left. So this is what the circle looks like. There's its bounds. And when we put the circle at 100, 100, it's a little different, isn't it? The edge of the circle is not at 100, 100, but rather the actual center of it, where the registration point is. Okay, let's um, back up and make a new rectangle again. We'll locate the rectangle at 100, 100, and we're going to try something different this time. We are going to dot rote. That stands for rotation. We're going to rote this 20 degrees. <laughs> this is rotation. A little bit more on these short chainable methods in a, in a sec. We're going to, or I'm going to show you a couple, and then we'll talk more about them and where they came from. All right, so if we dot rote 20, this will rotate our rectangle 20 degrees. Now, when we, when we outline the rectangle after we've rotated, this is what it looks like. Makes sense, right? But if we outline the rectangle before we rotate, But when we, uh, about the, a bit about the semicolon. The semicolon in JavaScript is actually optional. Uh, we don't need to put it. It's, it's bad practice to, to leave it out, but you can leave it out. But when we're chaining like this, like adding a whole bunch of things and we're, we're building and showing, sometimes it's easiest just to leave the, the semicolon out. And when we're finished working with the chaining, to put it back in. So it, it's up to you. But anyway, I'm going to leave it out for now then. If we outline before we rotate, watch what happens. The outline is like a snapshot in time. So here's what the rectangle looked like at that time, and then we rotate it at 20 degrees. And it's actually kind of handy to be able to do this so that we can have a look at what's happening. Do you see where the, ro the rotation is happening? It's happening around the registration point. So that's good to know. For instance, if we were to animate the rectangle it, and we animated its rotation, it would spin around its corner. And that actually looks kind of silly. It looks like this I don't know, a pinwheel. Usually we want our rectangles to spin around the center. Uh, how about scaling? So I'm going to comment out the rotation and I'm going to dot ska for scale. And we'll scale it twice as big. So now here is another chainable method called SCA for scale. And we refresh here, and you can see that the this is the old rectangle, or it was a snapshot at that time, and then we scaled it twice as big. And you can see that the scale is growing twice as big from the registration point. So that as well, if we were to animate the scale, looks kind of silly. You get this thing that grows from the top left corner. Often when we scale a rectangle, we want it to scale from the middle and sort of grow out. But it can be handy. It's uh, either. 
Uh, by the way, we can scale the x and the y here. If we put in just one value, one number for the scale, it will scale both sides or both ways equally. If we say 2 comma 1, this means scale it twice as wide, but keep a scale of 1 in the height, in the vertical. So this is horizontal scaling, vertical scaling. So if we save that, we see this. There it is, horizontally scaling twice as big and scaling vertically at a level of 1. It could be smaller than that, 2.5. Let me refresh here. And smaller. And by the way, you can even go negative. If we go negative 0.5, it will like go on the other side. It actually kind of flips. So that's a way that you can flip a shape is with a negative scale. Anyway, we're going to get rid of that. It's just a scale of 2. You can, of course, rotate and scale if we wanted to. Refresh. There it is, made twice as big and rotated at 20, so no problem. And once again, if we put that outline at the end, watch this. I sit on this line in Atom, I hold the control key, and I hit the arrow down. So that just moved my outline down. If I hold down the control key and move up, there it goes up. So we save that, and now it will be outlined as it stands now. <laughs> Okay, why don't we uh, put this back to up here and we're going to, uh, I guess we'll comment out the outline for now. All right, so as a matter of fact, let's comment out the rotation scaling for just a second and how about the look. So instead, we're going to center it, so dot center, like that. And I want to show you another one right now. This will be centered. Uh, well, perhaps we could leave the outline on this period here. Uh, there we are centering it. When we center it, the registration point is still here and it centers our rectangle on the screen there. And now, what we can do is if we want to change the registration point, we have two ways to do that. We could do this. We could say dot reg, a short little chainable registration changing. Remember, the registration point is where that circle is. And if we say, please put the registration point at 100, uh, well, let's put it at 200, 200, I think you'll get this, or 100, 100, <laughs> I can do it, 200, 100. So the rectangle is 200 wide, 100 tall. If we put the registration point at 200 over and 100 down, the registration point will be at the corner. Shall we see that? So we should see the round circle down here. We refresh. Now the round circle is down there, but note that it's still centered. So that takes a little bit of calculation on the Zim side to figure out, oh, I've just changed the registration, and now um, it's still centered. Do you get that? For, if, uh, for instance, if we were to lope that and not center it, then here's what that would look like. Refresh. There's 100 over and 100 down, but note that the rectangle has placed that, and now it goes off the stage. If we didn't change the registration point, it, it moves to here. So really, changing the registration point usually shifts the object, because where the object is going to be placed is just changed. But with Zim Center, it's remains centered. That's what I'm trying to get at there. <laughs> Okay, so that's one way to do the registration point, but there's a really neat way uh, to do a very common registration point is actually just to put the registration point in the middle. As remember, we had been saying, if we scale it, it'd be nice to scale it from the middle. If we rotate it, it'd be nice to rotate it from the middle. So here is how we can center it and center the registration. Center reg. So you'll find that that is quite common. This centers and centers the registration point. And it also adds it to the stage. Okay, so let's check that out. If we refresh here, now our rectangle is centered and its registration point is centered as well. So what's going to happen when we rotate this? What do you think? We refresh. 
and there it goes. It rotates around the center, which means if we were to spin this or animate it, it would look better. It would look more like a propeller rather than a pinwheel. <laughs> and if we scale it, comment out the raw, the rote. If we sky it as well, we refresh here, and now it scales it also from the center. So this seems like nitty gritty, doesn't it? It's like, oh yeah, okay, these are a lot of details. Uh, but registration point is one of the more confusing things when you're first working here on the canvas. And it's something that HTML kind of has. It's got some sort of transform bounds or transform point or something like that. But most people in the HTML world don't ever deal with this. In interactive media and, and uh, creative coding, we deal with it a lot. We're rotating constantly, and this is going to affect how that rotation happens. I went for like years, went for 10 years before rotating anything in the HTML world or traditional JavaScript HTML world. So uh, there you go. Uh, let's see, so that's the center reg. And I'll help out a little bit. I promised you some a little bit of information about these short chainable methods. Also, in the last video, I mentioned that I would show you the documentation as to where all these things can be found. It's it's nice to hear them as, as we show them to you. But what if you want to find out more about them, or indeed even more things that we can do here? So uh, let's accomplish both those things. Wrote and ska. Hmm. Rot and ska. Well, there's other ones too. We had seen move, M-O-V, before. That was for moving. Uh, but just how about a little bit about where these came from and, and why we have them. Okay, let's drop back to traditional interactive media. We're going to say const uh, circle equals a new circle. There we go. And we will dot. We haven't seen a pose yet, so I'll show you a pose in the meantime. We're going to pose this at 100, 100, like so. And let's just make sure that doesn't overlap. I don't think it will overlap. Nope. So uh, why are we rotating that thing still? Uh, we, un we uncomment. OK, so we have a circle now posed at 100, 100. Now you might think, oh, well, that looked easy. Look. It's 100 over and 100 down. But note what's going on here. We positioned it at 100 over to the left-hand side of the circle, not to its registration point. Watch this. Here's a difference. We're going to loc that. We'll put the registration point at 100, 100. And do you remember where the registration point is in a circle? It's in the center. So now the registration point is located at 100 and 100. So pose works in a little bit of a different way. Pose positions the left-hand side from the left-hand side. But watch this. We can also say from the right. Now it will position the circle, well, 100 pixels from the right and 100 pixels down to the top of the circle, 100 pixels to the right of the circle. Can you guess what bottom will do? Right, comma, bottom, like so. And we refresh here. And now it's posed 100 over from the right and 100 from the bottom. If we don't put anything in here, or indeed we could put left like that, then we would end up with the circle over here. Now just remember that's going to the edge of the bound, bounding box, not its registration point. We would use loc if we want to locate the registration point. You can also position from the center. So we could say, uh, t -t 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 well, I, I don't want to. There is a way of doing it in the center, but I'm getting sidetracked here on the fun things with pose. By the way, these two things, left and bottom, they are zim actual constants. Const is sort of a funny thing. Constants in other languages and in other times were considered uh, things that would never ever change, like pi. Math, you know, math.pi. Pi is a constant that will never change. 
the width of something, if we are right here, the stage, hey, I'm making a stage, but the next stage that I make in another app, that's a different stage. So really, stage is not an eternal constant. You know, we are actually going to be putting different stages. It's only constant in this one app. So anything that is an eternal constant that will never change, we often give them all capital letters like that. However, we did not do that with our um, kind of like temporary constant, we'll call it. <laughs> okay, so it was kind of funny when JavaScript introduced const, and we're all kind of going, well, okay, I'm used to I'm used to these capital letters for constants. Left is always quote left. Bottom is always quote bottom. It's just a word that we use to mean on the left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what these zim constants are. Uh, they're new, by the way. So it may be that you see a lot of documentation or examples, previous examples about pose, where we would say true here and true there. And what that means uh, in the past, we meant that's from the right and this is from the bottom. But people would look at this. What we found is people would look at this and not know what it meant. So can you see the difference? Now I kind of have a better idea what this means. 100 from the left, 100 from the top, or bottom, sorry. <laughs> if you, you can read the word, you know what it means. <laughs> anyway, like I said, we're digressing a little. Let's get back to uh, the case in point. But it's, uh, we did want to explore all these little chainables anyway. So we put a circle there, and uh, the uh, reason why we put a circle there is I want, and, and we've stored that circle in a constant, because I want to show you what it was like in the olden days of interactive uh, media. As a matter of fact, if we really wanted to, to venture back, we could end our circle there, just store it in a circle. We would then say something like uh, stage.addChild. Oh my goodness, this brings back memories. Add child circle. So that will add the circle to the stage. So we save that and refresh here. There's the circle. Note that we haven't said where to put the circle, just on the stage. So it's default x and y is 0 and 0. And its registration point is in the center of the circle. So that's what the circle looks like when we just add it to the stage. Now unfortunately, chaining will not work with add child. Because you've got to have the object that you're going to chain things on first. here. We've got the stage. I couldn't then chain on a scale for the circle because stage comes first, not circle. So what we did in Zim to help out with this chaining is we rearranged it. So rather than stage.addChildCircle, addChild, by the way, comes from CreateJS. So remember, Zim is based on CreateJS. AddChild was used in, in uh, Flash and maybe even in director. Um, there's something similar in JavaScript on the DOM or the when you're working with HTML where you can add, and I can't remember, add child, is it? Add element or something? Anyway, the child is, is a cute term, isn't it? So any container has children. <laughs> nice, huh? Children. And there's parents, children, parents, cute. Anyway, we no longer use that because it doesn't chain. Instead, we switch it around and we say circle dot add to the stage. So we put the circle first, then we add it to the stage. And because the circle is first, we can also say dot alp to change the alpha of the circle to 0.5. By the way, we raced through alpha a little bit. Alp or alpha, and we'll get to that goes from 0 to 1. So if it's 0, you can't see it. If it's 0.5, that means it's half transparent. And if you go to 1, then it's full opac full opacity opaque. You can't see through it. OK, so where I'm trying to get to, though, is what was the original way that we did this? We'll leave the circle that add to stage. That's fine. So the original way was no chaining, where we say, hey, uh, there's the object, we're storing it in a constant. Then we take that object and we apply a method to it to add it to the stage. 
If we wanted to change a property like alpha, we wouldn't do it with chainable methods. We would do it with a property. We would say circle dot alpha is equal to 0.2. So now we're hardly going to see this circle. It'll still be there, and let's uh, take a look. We refresh. Now, we haven't changed the position either, but there it is faintly. Uh, why don't we change the position? To change the position, we would not use dot loc or dot pose we or dot center or dot center reg. We would use a property, the x property. We would say circle dot x is equal to 100 semicolon and circle dot y is equal to 100 semicolon. So this is traditional interactive media. And we refresh here. Now our circle with the alpha down is at position 100, 100. And we made those changes with properties. So uh, let's get, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess I can leave that there. What I was wanting to uh, show you the difference about how much we're typing here versus how we do it now. So how we do it now is like this. Could you do it? New circle. We don't even have to put it into a constant because we're going to chain all of these things onto the end of our object. There's our object, new circle. Uh, I guess if we wanted to put it at 100, 100 on the stage, we wouldn't do any of this stuff. We would say dot loc 100, 100. And if we want to change its alpha, we don't have to drop out and change our alpha. We can go dot alp like that, 0.2. So there we go. This is about a quarter of the amount of code of that. So after a while of doing this, it was just, hey, wait a minute, there could be a better way, perhaps with chaining. And if you like things on new lines, you can just drop them onto new lines yourself, like we've been doing. There you go. New circle, dot locate it, dot change the alpha. Now, another way to do this would be to put all of the information in the circle as we make it. Uh, for instance, the x and y could be the first things, 100, 100. The alpha could be the next thing, 0.2. And we wouldn't have any of that at all. And it would all go in the parameters. But we have so many things that we make. And we'd have to add all these different properties, things like scale and alpha and scale x, scale y, the registration, all that stuff would have to be added into the parameters. And the parameters are already long enough. So because those specific things are common to all display objects, it sort of makes sense to take them out of the parameters and be able to apply them as we've been doing with the short chainable methods. And so Zim kind of sits between Vue, by the way. I don't know if you've heard of Vue. V-U-E is another library out there for the HTML DOM, document object model, so normal tags in HTML. We're on the canvas, slightly different. But how it works, just, just a little aside here, how it works is JavaScript in HTML5, the latest version of HTML, HTML5, JavaScript was split up into a core language. We are using the core language of JavaScript here. And then it was split up between the core language and this thing called a DOM, or the document object model, which is how we work with traditional tags, like image tags, div tags, paragraph tags and stuff. So that's the DOM. We're not using the DOM. We're using the Canvas API. So these are called APIs, Application Program Interface. So we have a core language that's just all of things like functionals, variables, loops, that kind of stuff that we're going to be looking at and that we use. And then you have what you're applying the language to. JavaScript can even be applied on the server where there are no HTML tags and there is no Canvas because it's a language, and that's really how it should be. So it's a good thing that they split that up. The DOM has been what people traditionally think of as JavaScript, of working on tags and setting styles and stuff, but it doesn't have to be applied to that. So that's one thing. That's the world of information sites, and it's primarily for displaying information, forms and stuff. And you can code there if you want, and that's what we've been getting. A lot of people learn to code there, and it's just like, ah. Oh, 
it, it, to us to, who do creative uh, creative coding, it's it's a little boring. It's not terribly exciting. It's it's useful. That's great. Anyway, I don't want to whine. Here we're using the Canvas, so we're using JavaScript on the Canvas API, and we're using libraries and frameworks to help us do that better, uh, because we have been doing this for over 30 years. I've been doing this for quite some time, since 1995. And we've honed it. We've made it work really well. And this is the result of all of those years, specifically for interactive media. JavaScript on the DOM was not made for this. JavaScript on the DOM uses strings instead of numbers. You have to take off pixels. It's just like, ah, oh, there's all sorts of issues there. But this is the, it's been honed. We know what we're doing. So this is great for making games, puzzles, art, things like that, creative works. So there, you got a, a mid, a mid lesson um, uh, pep talk. <laughs> All right, so where were we? Uh, Vue, I was going to say that Vue is a, a, a JavaScript framework for the DOM. And what Vue does is put almost everything, as far as I know, kind of puts everything into these brackets. Uh, we do something similar, but we go halfway there. We put the different things in there. We put half of the things in there. The things we have in common, we, we bring out and put somewhere else. All right, so let's uh, just delete that for now. So that was a little bit of a trip as to where these properties are and why we're no longer really using properties like this but instead are using our chainable methods because it reduces our code. And I comment out oh, whole history. All right, we better watch our time. We're trying to keep each of these around half an hour if we can. <laughs> I don't have a timer. <laughs> that might be something that would be a good thing. So I'm just uh, kind of, oh, do you eyeball time? You don't, <laughs> how do we, we guess at time? <laughs> There we go. Uh, is there something else? I said that I would show you the docs. So yes, why don't we do that? All right, we'll end up uh, showing you the docs. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com to see what more of these things we have. All right, so there's the school. We'll go back to the Zim site right here. Let's open that right up. Hello, Zim site. Oh, Zim 10, uh, Zim site. Okay, right down here in pink, right at the end, code, we often go to to find our template. Docs, we go to a lot to see our docs. So let's do that. Hit on docs. This is the Zim docs. Now it might be almost a whole lesson just talking about what the docs can do. So I'll give you a peek here, but we won't go too, too into it. Here are the things that are in the docs. There's the display objects, such as uh, shapes and circles and triangles and blobs. Here are all the components, list of components. Here are the things, the methods that we can add to any of those components. Add to, remove from, center, center, reg. Here's the short chainable methods right in here. Pose, loc, move, ska, alp, uh, blend mode, hover, we can set something to hover, rot, rotation, size. If we want to change the width and the height, we can change the size that way. Otherwise, most of the time we use scale and set a size, but sometimes you want to set it to a certain size. Ske for skew or skew. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Ske. Reg for setting the registration point. Top brings it to the top layer. Bottom goes to the bottom layer. We haven't talked about that all that much. Ord is a relative way to move that up and down. Cur applies a cursor. Sha makes a shadow. And depth sets a depth for VR. So there you go. The short chainable methods. And you can open up any of these things to see more information about it. <laughs> That's obviously a very small bit of information about an alpha. It's just basically saying uh, that that makes how transparent. However, if you take a look up here, for instance, the button we talked about the other day, if we open up the button, there are considerably more parameters for a button. And you'll get all the descriptions here with examples and what the parameters do and how to, how to change them, all that kind of stuff. There are methods, things that we can do to a button, toggle it, etc. Here are properties. 
properties that we can change on a button once the button is made and these things called events so how how do we apply click events those types of things we can close that up and that closes the button okay so that's a brief introduction to the docs there's also a video somewhere I put it in here update CDN intro video there's an a docs intro video so if you want to race ahead you're welcome to read the docs intro video all right that is uh, that's great I think that's a good place to end this video we have been doing a learn JavaScript with creative coding I am this guy right here <laughs>